You suing this man got all the receipts because you've been through this before. And he got what he needed. He got what he needed. From who? Ms. Blackman. Right. And that's why I said And it money. sounds like to me if there's somebody here that needs to be filing suit is Ms. Blackman. Your case is dismissed. Imagine you're 15 and just bought a new coloring book sitting in your room deciding which page to color first. And boom! You're told the man you believe to be your dad ain't your daddy. Can you believe the shock? Well, paternity peeps, meet Miss Henderson. She has lived your worst nightmare. You know, it's lonely. My kids, they want to know their grandparents. My daughter, she tells me all the time, Mom, we're going to find your dad. I'm just ready, but I need to know the truth. Oh, the wannabe daddy's princess has been living in a shell for years in the quest for her father. She had traveled mountains, deserts, forests. Oh, where am I headed? Sorry. However, her children's desire to know their grandparents had pumped her up. And this time, she was ready for the answers. I know that she's saying that, you know, he's my father, he's my mother, but I need to know the truth. I don't want to just think that someone's my father. I don't want that. I want to know. Growing up, you were told, Mr. Henderson, this is who you grew up knowing was your father. Mm -hmm. Yes, and during the time that I stayed there, I was treated different from my sisters. Doubts emerged when Miss Henderson was treated differently from her sisters and told she was adopted. Mr. Henderson had suspected her paternity due to her mother's pregnancy after a California visit. Let's listen to what Daddy Henderson had to say about this. She was your wife, so why was there any question about Miss Henderson's paternity? She left me in California, went to visit her mother in Arkansas. When she came back about a month or two, my other daughter told me that my mom was pregnant. Surprisingly, Mr. Henderson discovered he was listed as the father on Miss Henderson's birth certificate, though he didn't remember. <laughs> Talk about being responsible. But I'm still guessing how Mr. Rycraw came into the picture if Mr. Henderson has been all over the mom. Oops, all over the place. I asked my mom after that about him. She told me, I don't know why William thinks he's your dad. The last time I was with him, I was 18. And I had you when I was 25 or 26. My sister, when it comes to telling the truth on certain things, they'll beat around the bush. And like she didn't answer him when she came back, she didn't tell her the truth either. Oh, man. According to Miss Henderson's aunt, she took the confession out of her sister, adding that you can't lie to me because I'm your twin. Okay, so the bottom line is that they were both having affairs during the window of conception. Here, Mr. Rycraw shared his perspective. I believe she's my daughter because before Karen went back to California, I believe she was pregnant. I, I believed it, that she was pregnant. When we met, it was so emotional. But I accepted her because I believed in my heart that she was. Miss Henderson believed that Mr. Rycroft might be her biological father, as suggested by their mother. But here's the twist. Even though they applied for a paternity test, but never got to read it because the defendant called her claiming I'm not your daddy. What drama! The probability of paternity was determined to be 0.00%. He's not your biological father. <laughs> get the medic, get the medic. Someone call the medic, please. Oh boy, did the twin just faint? Well, we don't want any more dizzy dropping in the courtroom. But what can be done? I mean, everything was just so rough on the family. So how about we just focus on the DNA results and provide Miss Henderson with the closer she's been looking for for years. You are not the father. How are you feeling? I'm just even more scared. When you say you're even more scared, why? What if it's nobody, you know? Okay, if you think that was overwhelming enough, you haven't seen this one yet. Once again, thanks to a mom for her masterful art of conflicting narrative, Miss Brister was challenged by Mr. Morris, who firmly declared that he was 100% certain that she was his biological daughter. I met Mrs. Smith in 1984. At the time, I was involved with a breakdancing crew. When I met Mr. Smith, this one evening as we were performing, I knew right then I wanted to be with him. Oh boy, we have the Step Up Stars, AKA the dancing crew. At the time, Miss Smith used to attract a lot of attention, and he had to constantly protect their love. If that's like Mission Impossible, <laughs> 
Well, if that was the case, then why did he leave? You say you were only with her, she said she was only with you? I came back to town after hearing it from three different individuals that uh, she was pregnant with my child at the time, and we stayed in two different towns. So when I found out, when I heard it more than once, more than twice, I would say, I left. However, the story didn't end there. Miss Brister, as a child, had been told that the man on her birth certificate was her father. And it was all done because the baby mama didn't want to be with Mr. Morris. What are we, Boo Boo the Fool? Come on! But wait, listen to this surprise. I've always known the man on my birth certificate to be my father. I was about 16. Mr. Morris, he came to visit. He introduced himself as my dad. I don't remember the entire conversation that we had, but I do remember saying that he was my dad. He was there for maybe like a week or so, then he left. So he comes into town, he says, I'm your father. Yes, Your Honor. Now, here's where everything gets even more interesting. Then in 2015, Miss Smith dropped another bombshell suggesting that a deceased man named Mr. Woods could potentially be Miss Brister's father. Mommy, what are you doing? Y'all better just give away the truth. But why so many stories? I just didn't want her. I was trying to protect her. Is it because you knew that more than one man could potentially be her father? Or is it because you believed Mr. Morris was her biological father and he was living such a life outside the lines? Yeah. Which one? The way he was living. But we know when no one understands anything, Judge Lake does. She recognized the profound confusion and emotional toll these stories had taken on the defendant as all of this has started when the defendant was just nine years old. Now that's what you call a traumatic childhood. I need to ask you, what makes you so certain she is your biological daughter? When I was incarcerated, there was sheriff, sheriff deputies there from the town where she was living at, which I didn't know nothing about. They presented me with paperwork saying that I would be sued by eternal revenue for child support. I had the papers looked at by a law clerk. My question is, if you've known who the daughter is, Mr. Morris, why haven't you reached out to her? But the alleged daddy just spun a tale of saying that he had so much on his plate as he had experienced to her family members. Well, sir, we don't buy such testimony here. We just take it as someone's been trying to hide from their responsibilities. Before I would let the police intervene in your life and destroy the image you have of me as your father in your mind, I decided to leave. So you were saying that you knew you were her biological father, but because of the life you were living at that time, yes, ma'am, the criminal you felt element. It yes, was best yes, to leave her out of that. Yes, ma'am. Oh, man. After almost three decades of trying to find the biological father, the moment for Miss Brister had finally arrived. And today, she was about to be reunited with her daddy. Well, I'm still not sure. How about we just take a look at what Judge Lake has to say? Drum roll, please. The DNA results are here. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Morris, you are not her father. I'm very sorry. Can I hug my daughter? Absolutely, is that okay? Yet another case of mommy secrets. The stage was set for the mother-daughter duo, Miss Lawrence and Miss Simmons. The tension hung thick in the air as Miss Lawrence began narrating how her mother decided to drop a 28-year-old bombshell. <laughs> what a perfect time for a secret of such magnitude, right? She called me about six months ago. When I answered the phone, she was hysterically crying, and of course, I didn't know what was going on. And um, I'm asking her, what's wrong, what's wrong? She's beating around the bush, telling me all these random stories. And then finally, she goes into saying that she met some random man on the bus and that he could possibly be my father. Isn't that just the kind of news you'd want dropped during a casual phone call? <laughs> Well, the mommy had finally stumbled upon a potential biological father. Huh, what can we say other than just believing? Better late than never. I ran into uh, Rudy on the bus one day on the way from school. And I'm like, I know him, you know, from my past. I've never forgotten him. I say, excuse me, what is your name? Is your name Rudolph? And he says, yes. I say, Rudolph Rockamore. He says, yes, it is. He asks me, who are you? And I look at him like this. I'm like, for real, really? Now, imagine a chance bus encounter with an ex-lover. Miss Simmons, after recognizing this long-lost acquaintance, decided it was high time to delve into the depths of the past. They eventually broached the topic, because, let's face it, 
there's no better way to bring up the possibility of parenthood than during a bus trip. I just want to know why you didn't tell me before. Like, I couldn't. I had no when idea. When you say you no couldn't, Miss Simmons, why do you say you couldn't? The man that she calls her father, I mean, she's a daddy's girl, most definitely. I didn't want to break the bond between her and her dad. You know, I thought I would never see him again, so I felt that there was no reason for me to bring this up to her. Oh, but the plot thickens. Why didn't Miss Simmons spill the beans sooner? Well, she couldn't, of course. The man Miss Lawrence believed was her dad was just too great to risk hurting their bond. Besides, who needs clarity when you can have years of uncertainty? Wherever he would go, I would go. My dad always made sure I had money in my pocket. Always the flyest. I mean, back in those days, I'm an 80s baby, so. <laughs> That's a, trust me, I was years, alive in the you know. 80s, too. I won't tell my age, but I remember trying to be fly as well. Yeah, um, so you had a good relationship. Had a, we still do to this day. We have a really, really good relationship. Fast forward to the point where Mr. Rokemore made his grand entrance. Despite Miss Lawrence not being sure, there was no instant connection or resemblance. Shocking, right? Or maybe not, considering how this entire saga has played out. This case just keeps on getting interesting. How do you feel right now? I have butterflies in my stomach. I really do. I don't feel like there's any like attachment or like he could be my dad or You didn't I feel mean, I anything. I look at my my dad, dad, person that I call dad. I look at him and I'm like that's my dad. That's who I look like. Hmm. The defendant did record an exact testimony as the mother told. It felt like he was reading a script. However, can you just see the resemblance? This man gotta be her dad. If that ain't happening, I ain't playing. Just listen to Mr. Rokeboard explaining his side of the gig. When we uh, separated, I used to come back by her mom's house and, and, mm -hmm. and you know just see if I can see her out or anything, but I guess they had moved and... Yes, Miss Lawrence, yeah. Why, why, why do you wanna know if I'm your child or not? Because I think it's important to know who, who, are, my, who are my kids. I have kids. Yeah, that for certain. Now more stole at the swings or big wheels with a daddy. So as we wrap up this roller coaster of revelations and emotions, the question remains: what will the paternity test reveal? Alright, Judge Lake, it was time for you to do your magic. Mr. Rockmore, you are her father. <sighs> <laughs> no, leave me alone right now, please, Mosa. Oh my god. <sighs> Welcome into the noisy world of marriage and meet Mr. and Mrs. Carmen, a couple whose love story could make anyone want to sprint down the aisle. Their 18 year long union was like a fairy tale, or so it seemed, but something sinister was lurking in the shadows, ready to pounce for the husband denying his wife's child. 18 years of marriage, 27 we have been together. Today, our life is really dependent on what's gonna happen today. Wow. And so your marriage is on the line. Yes, Your Honor. You've been in turmoil because of this paternity issue. Yes, Your Honor. Let's rewind a bit, shall we? It all started with a dispute over a rental car. Yeah, you heard that right, a rental car. Because when it comes to saving a marriage, nothing says I love you like arguing over automotive choices. Who knew a set of car keys could send a relationship spiraling into the abyss? Right, Mr. Carmen? From day one. And I see tears in your eyes when you look at her. Yes, I, I love my, I love all five of my children by this one woman. I'm right here with this woman. Right, right here, here with this and woman. And I'm right here with you. And that's yeah. your daughter. And I, I don't have no kid nowhere else. I have nobody nowhere else. And I've been doing my job in my house. And so you are in the home together now. We are. You're married. Yes, we are. During their temporary separation, Mr. Carmen decided to embark on a journey of independence. He found himself a quaint little place he affectionately referred to as the Boom Boom Room. Now, don't let your imagination run wild just yet. It wasn't exactly a library for intellectual discussions. He went and rented an apartment. Yeah, I went and got my own. Turned it into street. a boom boom room. I had to. I had to pay. I had to pay somebody one hundred dollars to go into the home to see what was going on. And he, it was party central. And so a boom boom room is what a, a party house. It's a party house with women. With women. Now, as this saying goes, all's fair in love and texting. Mysterious text messages began to appear on Mrs. Carmen's phone, and they were as subtle as a bullhorn in a library. Thanks for being a stepdad, they said. 
Oh, the sweet nothings of modern romance. He showed me a videotape. I gave him the $100 bill. He showed me a videotape with him with all kind of women kissing on him, sitting all on his lap, doing all kinds of stuff. Uh-oh. So then I decided I got to go to me. I'm not supposed to sit around, even though, and I can't believe we had been married so long. We should have been able to work through this. But I wasn't about to sit around. I went and did me. I went and found somebody, and I had to go and do me. Oh, boy. The text messages didn't stop at compliments, though. They escalated to demands for a DNA test for their four-year-old daughter, Ranasia. Because nothing says family bonding like requesting a paternity test from a mystery man's family member. The drama was starting to reach soap opera levels. Thanks for being a stepdad. No, that was the highlight of the text. Oh, that, the highlight. That, that, that was the highlight of the, of the, of the, of the text for what? Y'all driving. <laughs> okay, so then we'll move right along. Step aside so Lakeisha and my cousin can be together. What? You die. I've never seen that, Your Honor. We demand a DNA test for Rhinasia. Mystery man's people. And yep, that's about it, people. The mystery man who has been sending messages must be thinking that he's the biological father. But Mr. Carmen, it's been three years, and that's a lot of time thinking. Let's see what Miss Carmen has to offer. Is Wait this baby now, kid? This was summer 2011. It's supposed to be over with. Girl, it's three going on four, but this 2000, it's six years later, they asking for a paternity test. Miss Carmen? Yes, Your Honor. He's saying that the window of conception does not match up to the separation. It matches up to a period of time when you are back in the home supposedly working on the marriage. Uh, well, on that note, how about we just focus on their love story? What do you think will be rewritten? Or will the defendant, Mr. Carmen, end up in another boom boom room? <laughs> Only Judge Lake can provide us with a concrete answer. Let's fast forward to the DNA envelope. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Carmen, you are the father. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hold on. I told you. I told you. I told you. Okay, get up, get up. Miss Scott claims she gave birth to twins hoping to spark joy between her and Mr. Holloway. But that didn't happen, because a bombshell dropped when Mr. Holloway questioned the paternity of her older child, Jaden. And so the drama began. And we are in for it now, aren't we? When me and Miss Scott were in a relationship, she has kept in contact with Mr. Alexander the whole time throughout both pregnancies. Throughout her pregnancy the first time, she's contacted him through Facebook, text messages, phone calls. So have you been contacting this man continuously, Miss Scott? No, I have not. Time to dive into the soap opera of their relationship. Yep, mommy and daddy's love story was a twisted web of on-again, off-again shenanigans. But the real kicker ended up being Miss Scott's long-term pal, lurking in the shadows of their romance and sowing the seeds of doubt. How did this situation go in your estimation? Me and Mr. Alexander were just friends. We did mess around like years ago, and he's been my friend about as long as I've known Mr. Holloway. Around the time that my son Jaden was conceived, I had no contact with him. We haven't even been in a relationship. Oh, the drama, it was full of it. Mr. Holloway, though with a heavy heart, casted doubt on little Jaden's paternity. Why? Because apparently, baby mama maintained contact with Mr. Alexander, and not just one, but throughout both pregnancies. And the mother dearest of the defendant backed him right up on this one. She admitted to me that she was going around where he was and they were together at certain times of that, that year. When she got pregnant in 2012, I ended up living with her at her grandmother's house and staying with her throughout the whole pregnancy. Going to every doctor's appointment, being So you loyal. all were together at, at this time. At that Ladies and gentlemen, gather around because Miss Neal had a lot to say. But wait, as Miss Scott dished it right back. Oh yeah, now it was a party. Baby mama claimed they were never in a committed relationship. <laughs> okay, and yet Mr. Holloway wasn't buying it. Ah, the tangled matters of the heart. I'm gonna be in the business gone. cause this is my child. Yeah, your child is about to be 26 years so old. What, he's what not you a got baby. to do with it? He's not a baby anymore. He's mine, not he's yours. Not a baby. So that's the only thing with that. That's why she have a problem like she does now. Yeah, this, this is, is why nobody old, don't you want to help her. Me. You never approached me from day one. Yeah, I have. Moving on, baby daddy was at birth and even acknowledged paternity. But then, during Christmas, his merry holiday changed swiftly into a devastating one real fast. Oh, yeah! Who knew a baby picture on Facebook would end up crushing the guy? And Grandma was made the judge 
jury, and executioner. She, she looks like me. She posted that picture that. on Facebook, and before before I even saw that picture, yeah, I had saw Mr. Alexander in 2012, which was the last time I saw him face to face. And when I seen this picture, he looked just like Mr. Alexander. So that's when I began and to I have, have doubts. I have a picture too, Your Honor, of it that my son. So that happened, but that wasn't the end of it. Yep, listen to this. Apparently, there was a birthday party, and some parties weren't invited. Uh-oh, and they definitely didn't like that fact. And that fiasco led to another issue these guys were dealing with. If it's not, I still want to see the baby. You be denying me from it. How do I do that? You know exactly how, how you do it. How do I do that? What you, you mad about the me. birthday party? That wasn't my place to invite you. You could have came. Matter of fact, I oh. heard you was on your way. You didn't even show up. Don't That's even. not my place to invite you and Why? me and you. Why? not even not your place? You me the mother? you weren't even speaking at the time. Well, moving on from that, we ended on the day of birth. And man, was that filled with drama as well. You bet it was. It seemed mommy didn't want the baby to be passed around the family. And the terminology she used for that was a little, shall we say, controversial. He telling uh, people in the hospital like she's not finna be passed around like a trophy because I know that she meant she didn't want me to No, actually I meant, did you see how many people was there? How many friends I had there? It wasn't even about you. Why are you making this about you? It's about Jaden. It ain't about me. So quit it's talking about it about you. anyway. You don't want to know anyway, nothing about it. I'm about Jaden. Until I'm now, Your Honor. Next up, Mr. Holloway wasn't done casting doubts. Oh, he had more and he relayed them. All pointed to Mr. Alexander, and about time we heard from this guy who managed to bring this level of chaos to these guys' lives. It's gotta be something. When I saw this picture, and I know for a fact that Miss Scott and Mr. Alexander keep in contact, that they had well, a sexual relationship pregnant, with, though. While I was pregnant, no, I haven't. That was that was years ago. This and, is not years and ago. And while I was pregnant with Jaden, he had like offered to even buy my son some some shoes, just being a friend. You're right. Wow. He's not trying to take charge and be his daddy. Drum roll, please, because the big reveal was here. Yup, the DNA diagnostics delivered the verdict, and boy, were we ready for it. Time to see whether all those doubts were true or the guy was just full of it. Mr. Alexander, you are not his father. Yes. Mr. Holloway, you are his father. Yes. Yes. So good. Thank you. Miss Samantha had been on a lifelong quest. The aim? To prove that Mr. Froyo was her biological father, despite his decades-long denial. But here's the twist. He once signed her birth certificate, but tables soon turned, and now they were here. You're sure today's DNA test results will prove that you are not, in fact, her father. I have to ask you first, Ms. Dixon, how does it make you feel that Mr. Froyo is denying you. It makes me angry and hurt. Um, I was diagnosed with cancer and recently I've been very ill. I would like my father to be there. Get ready for some family dynamics that can even make the Kardashians shy. And that's saying something. Poor Samantha had been dealt heavy cards, but she pulled through even though the man denied her and had been quite harsh to her when she had just been a little girl. Cue the craziness and a mysterious Tom Ashley. I just want to know. I don't want him to feel sorry for me. He says he's not my dad, but he'll be there for me. I don't need a charity case. You know, if he's not my dad, he's not my dad. But if he is, I'd like him to know, like, I've been through so much. My grandmother passed away, his mother, in 98. At the funeral, he told me my tears weren't needed because it wasn't my grandmother. I mean, what? So Mr. Froyo denied the daughter all these years, but guess what? He had a tattoo of her name on him as well. Now, what the heck was up with that man? Apparently, one fateful evening in Florida ended up changing it all. Like he said, he's got older children. All four of us are in a row, from oldest to youngest. My name's on his arm. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Now, why would you tattoo her name on your arm if you didn't believe she was yours? Up till five years ago, Your Honor. Are you serious right you now? You denied me in 98. Let me ask you, hush up there, lady. I'm talking. Oh. Mr. Jensen. Well, the guy wasn't winning any Father of the Year awards, that's for sure. On the contrary, he was the perfect candidate for the opposite category. Samantha ended up telling all the times and instances he had denied her. But there were some good moments of these guys. I know, I know, hard to believe that. If you have compassion or at least some type of affection, 
towards Ms. Dixon because it's not being shown very much in the court today. Whatever the paternity comes out to be, it is. I have neither dislike her or like her. Well, absence of a father led the plaintiff down the wrong road, and there were consequences. But what was even more astonishing was the way the defendant reacted to the said situation. Man, this dude could give serious competition to all the jerks out there. He sat in the opposite part of I'm the like, funeral parlor. I, I love the way that she could read my mind and she could predict what I say and what I don't say, Your Honor. Did you show up to the funeral? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Was and it no, I did not make statements like that because that is unmoral. You're unmoral. I have, I have more <laughs> class than that. I have a lot so more class than that. So when you showed up to the funeral, Oh dear, the confusion and desperation were palpable. Mr. Froyo was still standing by his testimony, listening to his supposed daughter pour her heart out, and he had the nerve to call that sympathy thing. Well, he was long due for a class in manners, and he was about to get one. I don't care if you don't think she's your daughter. I'm talking about her as a woman, having to go through what she's gone through, and you don't have a level of sympathy for that? I really must say to you that it is disappointing for you to make a statement like that. And you are old enough. You're a grown man with kids. Enter the daughter the daddy did not deny. By the looks of it, Mr. Froyo accepted her, but there was more. She was in full support with Miss Samantha. Yep, and even backed up her claim on daddy's preference for sons. Wow. Here for him to take my brother. He had to take me. Did he want to take me? No. My mom made him take me. And yes, we used to go to Patty's house when my dad was with her. He wasn't always there. We were there with Patty. To me, it was a girl thing. I have three boys and not want nothing to do with me until I had my first son. Is it a sympathy game or a paternity revelation? Well, the results could decide that, and they were in. Judge Lake put a much needed end to this drama and laid down the truth. Let's see whether Samantha's quest comes to an end or not. Mr. Froyo, you are her father. Told you! I'm a man you of my word. Samantha, I apologize to you, and I'm wrong for being the way I was. Mr. Hill, having dropped a whopping $50,000 in child support, was now ready to put his foot down and demand a DNA test for Ms. Harris's 18-year-old son, Tamont. But was Tamond really his flesh and blood? Time to get to the bottom of it. Don't you think he's yours? Basically, she had um, sexual intercourse with somebody else. Excuse me, All right. Honor. Excuse me. Okay, so hold on. What, Ms. Harris? He's a liar. A total liar. I've never been with anyone in the three years that we were together. So, baby mama called the daddy straight up a liar. But he wasn't coming slow either. Yep, they were both ripping into each other. It seemed a family reunion brought a little more than the family together. And that's when this whole paternity mess started. We broke up at least about six times. Uh-huh. And the actually, that maybe the next to last time we broke up, she got mad at me because I couldn't go on a trip with her to New Orleans for a family reunion. And actually, what happened was, maybe like a week after she came back, she told me that she had slept with somebody else. Well. This was a classic tale of trust gone awry. And boy, did the wounds run deep. Miss Harris ended up narrating how the baby daddy was once ecstatic over the joyous news and accepted it wholeheartedly. So, where did it all go wrong? I need you to fill in some of the blanks with your Excuse me. interpretation okay. of the event. I got pregnant, first in the delivery room. He was so happy talking about he didn't want to sign a birth Excuse certificate, me, jumping, hollering, I got her a speak, baby. Let her he speak cut the, um, the umbilical cord, everything. We was at the store one day, he's hollering across the store, I got a baby, I'm bad pampered, look at my baby. With no legal guidance, Mr. Hill ended up acknowledging paternity. And so the child support train took off from the station. However, the guy did try for the DNA test. Apparently, the baby mama proved to be a difficult woman to get a hold of. You never had that. Different you occasions. Are amazed, happy because this was your, your first Honor, child. Different occasions. I'm at court. She's nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. Child different. When we go to different child support, I used to pay three hundred, maybe four hundred dollars every two weeks in child support. She never showed up. I tried to get a DNA test. She never showed up. So I tried over years and years and years. Baby mama was supported by her mother dearest, and when she stepped up to the podium, she directed all her pent up 18 years of anger towards the baby daddy. 
Oh, you better believe she gave him a piece of her mind and more. You need to be ashamed of yourself. You, are you blind, Chris? Do I you see him, Chris? That look exactly like Do you see him, Chris? Well, your daughter shouldn't have your been Your other children do not look like you. You need to have them on paternity court back in front of this judge, because he looks like you, they don't. My kids look exactly like me. Are you like crazy, Chris? No, I could pull out a picture are and show you, crazy, you he looks Amidst all this chaos, Mr. Tamon finally gets the much needed time to state his case. And boy, did he live a rough 18 years of existence. All thanks to Mr. Hill, who wasted no moment to make the poor guy question his paternity. And he brought proof of that. I see everybody else with their father, and I don't. It's all right, babe. Take your time. You said everybody else had a father. And I just feel like he should be there. He should have been there my whole life. I should remember him through my life, and I don't. I did try to have a relationship with Taman. He didn't want to have a relationship with me. And it's always when I do talk to him, it's about money. I gave him my phone number on many different occasions. Well, looky here. Miss Harris brought an exhibit along to lay rest to all the doubts of the baby daddy. But he was still standing firm, and even tried to accuse the defendant of ghosting him. But the grandma shut that down. He can come and ring the doorbell, your honor. He knows where we live. The fact that he's sitting here, he has the audacitated gall to say that this child is not yours. So you're angry because you feel like out of all this time, you already have not been the father Correct. you're supposed to be. But now, after this time to question paternity. Correct. The suspense had reached its peak, and we reached the most important stage of this drama. Yup, the results were in, and Judge Lake was all the more ready to deliver the verdict to finally put an end to the misery of poor Tamont. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Hill, you are his father. Can I say I something? I think you owe my son an apology. Excuse me. That's what Zachary exactly I'm finna do. Tamar, I apologize for not being in your life. If you think that paternity deniers are all convinced within days, don't forget the case of Miss Newell, whose partner had been in paternity doubt for 22 years. Will they be able to find closure today? Let's see what happens in this tale of courtroom drama. I had a bike accident. I was riding a bike with no seat on it, and my brakes went out, and I flipped over the handlebars, and the poles went up into my groins. I was in the hospital for 37 days. I had to learn how to walk all over again. And I got better. The doctor told me it's a possibility that I won't be able to have children. That's why I'm here. But before we reach any collusion, Laval Sr. claims that it is medically impossible for him to have fathered a child due to an injury he sustained as a child. He mentions a bike accident that caused severe injuries to his groin area. Whoops! Somebody ain't gonna participate in the bicycle league this time. This the fact guy that the matter still remains is you sat up there with your mouth. I don't want no animosity. Yes, I left him by the time I was four months pregnant, and I have my reasons for that. Ask him about that. You, I went back home. Me. To I my put you parents. out the house. I went I told home. I told you, and you on the porch, when I saw you on the porch. No, 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 with dude, I told Ms. you to Dorris. get your stuff. Come to my house, Ms. get Dorris. your stuff, and leave. Oh my God! Why are you people getting so loud? I mean, we can all hear you. This ain't a gathering of five thousand. Just hold your emotions. <laughs> That's what we're all here for, right? That juicy drama? Well, these emotions were running high. According to Mama, the alleged daddy has been throwing allegations of lying. I pull out nudie pictures of her. What nudie pictures? Oh, you of don't who? remember now? You don't the remember the nudie pictures? This story, so stop I was, lying. Oh, I didn't meet this person until after my son turned a year old. This person stepped up to the plate and been, I was a man to my son and is still a man and a father to my son till this day. Oh. All because you didn't want to stand up to your responsibility. Now that was some really loud voice. One thing's for sure, ma'am, you got great lungs. You should probably try out in the Mentos commercial. Ah, never mind. So Mr. Laval Sr. explains that his doubts about being the father stemmed from a brief four-month relationship with Miss Newell. During this time, he learned that she was involved with another man. What technology are hey, you in? Cell phones. Cell phones didn't have that technology. I and you him. didn't even have a phone. So wait, oh, how you gonna say that? I have the same phone, phone number for 15 Ms. years. Ms. Dorr, you're lying. You can't Dorr. keep a job, let alone a phone. Okay. Ms. Dorr. But, but I keep, but I got, I got a job. good job. Well, wait, you do let's pay for your son now. Order. Let's get some order. I, I, I am. Now, let's get some order. Mr. Doris Sr. then claimed that he moved away due to job reasons and that Newell called him to pick up their son because he was acting up. 
Mr. Torres Sr. traveled a long distance to Chicago to get his son, but Newell didn't allow him to take LaBelle Jr. because she didn't believe he lived in Chicago. What I want to know is, at the point you signed that birth certificate, and you know by signing that, legally you're recognized as his father, which is why you're responsible for child support. Yes, I don't got no problem. If you know that it's impossible for this child to be your son because of this medical condition, why would you sign the birth certificate? I had doubts, but I was so happy to have a son. Well, the wannabe couple wasn't getting tired of yelling at each other, so how about we just call in Mr. LaBelle Jr. to the courtroom and share his perspective? I mean, like the poor kid has been in the dark for about 22 years now. If they don't stop arguing, he also has the right to express his frustration. Knowing that the way I grew up, you know, me, I was a basketball player, you know, to grammar school, my mom was there, but high school, she wasn't. My dad supported me in none of my games. It kind of hurt seeing my teammate fathers over there mm -hmm. and knowing that mine is going to be there. All right. Now, since they've been yelling like they were standing in a stadium and all the ruckus hasn't brought one another to pledge for the mistakes that they've committed, it was now time for Judge Lake to come in and start calling the shots. So let's get right to the results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Doris, you are his father. Take me out. Damn. Get that up out of here, boo. All right, paternity peeps, get ready for another showdown of who's the daddy. You quite often hear about money fraud, but this is gonna be a new one. Mr. Jackson has petitioned the court for a DNA test because he believes Miss Eland has committed paternity fraud by claiming he fathered her two-year-old daughter. Because if this was my child, I want to be in my child's life. You supposed to let somebody know. Aaliyah picked up and took off. Never heard from her, then she started playing Facebook games. Sending me messages, then block me, using other people's names. Yeah, it's, Are you it's... playing games, Miss Eland? No, no, yes, y'all, no, I'm not yes, playing games. Yes. Oh, the good old social media blocking game. What are you people, teenagers? You'll literally have a child situation in hand, and this is how you want to treat it? Sounds like a wall of ego clustered your brains. Anyway, Mr. Jackson, take us back to the nature of the relationship, or might I say, situationship. I was leaving, I got off work. She was next door from my job as a public aid office place, and she was coming out of there. And I said, hey, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? Let me talk to you, get your number, whatever. She said, sure. Wrote the number down. I said, where you headed to? She said, I'm going home. I called her. She answered the phone. That night, me and Leah had sex on the back porch. <laughs> wow. Oh, come on, man. You can't just blame the woman alone, even if it happened on the porch the day y'all met. Mr. Jackson, you are equally involved in this. But listen to this. It was all happening without commitments. Give me a break. It was just sex-wise. Every time he called my phone, it's sex-wise. You oh, say you were in a relationship, Mr. Jackson. We wasn't in no relationship. We had no, we had no strings you. attached. And yeah. it's just sex in a car. She's a jump off. No, no reason. No I'm a jump off. Wait a minute. Easy. I'm a jump easy. off. Easy. But you Let's get back some back order. Let's get easy. some order. Thank God, Judge. I really needed that. More than me, someone had to say it out loud and knock some sense into these kids having kids. After Mr. Jackson repeated the porch incident, just look how Miss Eland reacted again. Man. Explain the guy on the back porch. Who's that guy on the back porch? Wait, I thought you was on, on the back, back porch. porch. Oh, my God. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, oh, wow. 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 There was two guys on the back porch. Me and the mystery man. Tell me I was on the back porch. Wow. The guy will no, grill me. You're just Look jealous. You're just a jealous person. If you see someone else around, you think that I'm messing with somebody. No, that whole time we yeah, were just having sex. It was at just that time me and you. Ah, feels like Mr. Jackson's jealous. Nothing else, right? Oh, boy. So if you think he's that simple, then you've taken it all wrong. According to him, Miss Eland was already in a relationship, and that's the reason why they got cozy on the porch and not in the bedroom. What? I started coming over there, blowing the horn. Her family come to the window. She's not here. She's gone. Come to the house, blow again. Bye bye, Lee up there. Now she gone. She on the side of the window, moving the curtains, looking. I'm dead. She go right there. Look, you call me to come out and have sex. Whoa! Well, if I don't want to have Never sex, you get upset. In. We know when everything gets this confusing. Where do we go from here? Yep, the timeline. How about we focus on that and do some math? All right, so Miss Eland, how about you shed some light on your version of it? He come see me that night, the same day, November 15th. He came to see me. We were sitting in the car. I was talking to him. I mentioned something about I'm hungry. She say, okay, he'll be back. Here it is, 30 minutes passed by. He never came. An hour passed by. 
he never came. Three hours I'm passed by, he never came. Where he go? He done disappeared. He ain't see him no more. Those logos distract anyone else for a new Snapchat sign? Uh, never mind. Coming back to the case. I think most of the things are now pretty clear, so how about we just stop recording the testimony and give you the closure you deserve, Mr. Jackson? Here are the DNA results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Jackson, you are the father. <laughs> You are the father. That's your beautiful little girl. <laughs> Two years old and has no relationship with her daddy. Guys, this one has been really hilarious. A woman was alleged to be sleeping with five men from the same family. But wait, keeping in mind that she's married? Yup, we did get that part figured out. Wanna know how? Because her husband, Mr. Rash, was calling the shots. Well, that's enough reason to doubt paternity. Mr. Rash, how did you find out she was cheating on you? I found out that she cheated on me through text messages that she had in her phone, people on Craigslist, men that, uh, you know, incriminating messages, something that should never, ever been on her phone. We weren't together. It doesn't we matter. Were not, you know, no, even it doesn't when we matter. were together. We're together. Even when we were, were together. together. That makes no sense, Even Chris. when we were together. Oh, man, what an emotional damage. All right, miss, I ain't buying your foster care excuse. It's nothing but abuse. However, Ms. Fuentes explained that she never truly fell in love with Mr. Rash. She even had another man waiting on the side. What's this woman doing? In your opinion, you felt like we're together. Yeah, we're and together. And so during the time of conception, yeah. you think you're still in a relationship. Yeah, and then she said that, you know, like all of a sudden now we ain't together and you know, I'm just supposed to just to take it. I mean, yeah, if I say I'm done, I'm done. But you ain't I mean, done. You, Evidently, you, you ain't do? done because you keep coming back. Wait, Mr. Rash, judging by the looks, it's probably because the baby mama didn't take her responsibilities for the kids. I mean, like, that wasn't obvious. If she has been sleeping around, getting names tattooed of different men on her body, just listen to Miss Fuentes justifying everything. This is what I don't get. You stand here, you talk about Mr. Rash, he's this, he's that, he's too soft talk. You married him. Me and him had gotten in an argument because he was too busy accusing me. Oh, you did this to the man. I didn't oh, even you did accuse you of anything at Every, that point. Anything. I didn't even he know any of that. He accuses me of doing anything, you know what I mean? To make himself feel better, he likes to pick and choose. Yeah, now think of yourself. I would have definitely been frustrated if I were to be in Mr. Rash's shoes. All right, just forget everything for a while and listen to her little bedtime tale. Okay, Miss Fuentes, we are all ears. It's now time for you to spill the beans. I went over there and my ex-boyfriend, which is one of her sons, he was actually in prison at the time. And we were having a good time and I will admit, me and her son Chuck, we had a sexual relation that night. But if you were such in love with, with uh, the other brother, why would you have sex with the other brother? To that be honest no with you, sense. what do you mean? I wasn't in love that with that no brother. That made no sense. I wasn't that in love no with sense. that brother. Huh, the brother incident has taken over our minds. And now it's really getting annoying. Miss Fuentes, you say that you love the man, but you also go around sleeping with multiple dudes, and yet you call it love. But just hold on. How about we listen directly from one of the men from the Cuddle Hours? Did you have sex with Miss Fuentes? Yes, Your Honor. Now, what was the nature of your relationship? Pretty much just family friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so just a family friend? Right. Do you believe you're her child's father? Not really. Don't look like me at all. Looks don't matter. I mean, if the defendant was so openly admitting to committing infidelity, why don't we just focus on the results first and get the closure? If there was no shame in the game, why do we have to wait, Mr. Rash? And honestly, man, we're all rooting for your win here. Here is the DNA sprinkle for both the kids. When it comes to one year old Christina, Mr. Rash, you are her father. When it comes to two-year-old Gabriella, Mr. Judd, you are the father. Oh, did you just hear that? Now, I don't know if that's a win or a lose situation. Whoa, what just happened? But people, buckle up for some intense rage reaction coming up from Mr. Rash. Oh. Here, have a look. I'll Why never are you forgive crying? you for that. I'll never forgive you for that. She deserves to know. No, it she don't deserve you. to know. Yes, she does. You lied to her and you lied to me. I'll never forgive you. Never. 
You should have never, ever did that. Should have been straight up front. Why are you so emotional, Miss Fuentes? Because I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> we all really need a break, because these paternity denial cases are increasing every day. Why can't you people just take responsibility? Ugh. Meet another paternity denier, Mr. McQueen, who had abandoned his alleged nine-month-old daughter. Here we go. Let's just focus on the case. Mr. McQueen, you claim that Ms. Cherpez's relationship with multiple other men is what drove you away, and you believe that today's result will prove baby Araya's father is another man. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Well, bravo. Why is everyone so focused on getting diapers for the baby? Well, they might be important now, but what about the mental health of the poor child? I mean, come on, Mr. McQueen. You shouldn't be proud of yourself. I have doubts because I didn't have her full attention when uh, we were together. She had uh, was more more interested in getting other men's attention than mine. So tell me, what was the nature of your relationship? Were you committed? Were you boyfriend and girlfriend? Yes, we were committed, yes. So you were boyfriend and girlfriend in a committed relationship? Yes. Mm, sounds fishy. But wait, listen to this. Miss Chirpez found out that Mr. McQueen's cheating when she set up a situation to catch him in the act by pretending to visit her father's house, but returning early to find him with another woman. Now that's the female version of Ethan Hunt. Um, I asked him to make her leave and they were both smirking at me the whole time like it was a joke. And I, I had, did not all your honor think it was a joke. I had my three year old daughter with me too. So I didn't want confrontation in front of her and I ended up kicking him out and took him off my lease the next day. It all feels like the plaintiff was getting back at Mr. McQueen by talking to other men. And you already know what that means. Somebody was in love playing love me like you do in their head. If all of that's true, this ain't cheating, folks. It's a heartbreak. So you did? You went to another man's house and spent the night? Yeah, because he had brought a woman to our house. And so you find out he's cheating. Is this before or after you have this episode where you go to the house and there's another woman in the house with him? This was before. So before? It's been numerous occasions. It Your wasn't Honor. just once. Uh, there's been about three girls in my house, yes. Now, isn't that all hurtful? It's like they both have been playing Hunger Games, but the revenge version. And they're not literally killing themselves, but killing each other's emotions. Just listen to how Miss Chirpez expresses her way of dealing with the baby situation. How many children do you have? I have two children. I had my own house. I was living in the house that we had actually originally gotten together, and I struggled for the whole year to keep it. I was working 12-hour shifts, going to school. I was taking Raya to school every day with me. Just go blaming the man already for being a deadbeat. Mr. McQueen mentioned that he was working long hours to support their family, but felt excluded from their lives. I mean, I don't really know what to say to that after we just heard the mama has been raising the kid alone. But hold on, who's this man? Did you have a sexual relationship with Miss Chirpez? At one point in time, yes. So how did you all meet? Uh, online. And it quickly developed into a sexual relationship or? Um, she was a single parent, I was a single parent. Um, it was kind of just getting to know each other. Was it an intimate relationship? At one point, yes. At one point it was. How often were you intimate? Not very often at all. The revenge games were about to come to a close, and we've now questioned enough motives. Now, the baby's here. It doesn't matter who did what and why. The only thing that matters is who's their baby daddy. So buckle up, Judge Lake was about to read the results. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. McQueen. <laughs> Mr. Robinson thought he was happily married to Miss Fuller for 12 years. But then one unfortunate day, she broke some terrible news to him, that he was not the only man in her life. That's why, ding ding, paternity doubt. I take him to the birthday party. Later on after the party is over, I drop him off at his grandmother's where I thought Miss Fuller would be. Well, she, well, she didn't come down, that was fine, it was okay. So another day passed, I'm calling all day the next day, no answer. Maybe a day or so, I'm starting to get these phone calls, but they're private. During their financial struggles, Miss Fuller's thoughts were consumed by the man with whom she had slept, 
Finally, Gil took such a toll on mommy that she went MIA for the entire week. She kept the whole relationship a secret, hence the private number. And all the while, Mr. Robinson, you're bonding with this baby is named after you. Oh yeah. It's your son. Sleeping on my chest at night. I mean, I barely move. I mean, you know, like I would sleep like this. Bare, real quiet, real move, real I, I know feel. that move. Wow, that was brutal of you, Miss Fuller. No way to treat your man. Poor Mr. Robinson was stuck in some really bad business until Brandon Jr. came along and helped him out of the strains of possibly being cheated on. But now, it was time to dig up some dirt. Well, actually, I sat down on the couch at first, so I handed her the phone. I was like, read this. So she reading it, got a, a little look on her face or whatever, and I, I got up after that, and um, I went to the washer, and I started taking clothes out the washer and out the dryer and all of that stuff. But I'm like, leave Brandon, because you gotta work tomorrow anyway, and it was my day to keep him anyway. After hearing Mr. Robinson's story, Judge Lauren asks Miss Fuller the details of the affair. When she admits she had an on and off again thing with the guy for eight years, the entire audience boos at her. What kind of married woman does this behind her husband's back? I wasn't supposed to have kids. What do you have there? A calendar. A calendar. You presented here indicates in 2004, you meet the other potential father. Yes, Your Honor. And during the time of conception, you were with this other guy as well. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Robinson, I can tell by the look on your face <laughs> you did not know this. When Mr. Robinson finds out his wife was with the other guy during the time of conception, it's like someone ripped his heart out. He's super confused about his child's paternity, and the entire audience has one thing on its mind. How did Miss Fuller keep such a long affair a secret? If he is his biological father, does he want to be a part of Brandon Jr.'s life? I wouldn't want him to be a part of his life because he's not like the type of guy that you just want to raise your kid or, you know. It's just the kind you just want to go to his house every time you get in an argument with your boyfriend. At the, at the time, yes. Looks like Miss Fuller's mistake will cost her a good man as well as her son because the other guy doesn't want to raise this kid. And now Miss Fuller's going to reap what she's sown. One thing's clear, Mr. Robinson's not going to get back with Miss Fuller. How does that make her feel? I'm gonna come back, you know, be with you. I won't be there like but that. But that's not why I broke up with you. But I will why always did you break be there. up? Yeah, I would love. I did it for myself. I did it because I need to learn how to love myself more instead of trying Amen. to build a relationship with somebody and I'm not loving myself. I'm loving you more than I'm loving me. Like, that's not right. I need to build myself up. So that's why I broke up with him. As the case moves forward, Mr. Robinson withdraws his petition to have the baby's name changed. He did that out of anger, and now he's realizing he's better than that. Well, it's time to open up the results and see whose baby this beautiful boy is. Mr. Brandon Robinson Sr., you are his father. <laughs> Well, I don't even have to ask you how you feel. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, this is the best day ever. You know how you always say? <laughs> best day ever, so. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson are fighting over the paternity of their daughter. Mr. Johnson is 100% certain that his wife cheated on him, and now he wants his name removed from the birth certificate. But Miss Johnson has other things in mind. I feel like my kids don't deserve this. My daughter don't. She's only 10 days old. Finding numbers in his phone, finding pictures. Like, I find it for that moment. He'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. But then he'd go back right back to doing it. I left. A lot of it was like business. She was That's what like, he I'm an artist. I do a lot. I deal with a lot of women but it don't have to be, oh, you're beautiful. Upon hearing Miss Johnson's excuses, Mr. Johnson says he's just trying to protect himself. They've had a rocky relationship, and he spent a lot of time on the streets with other women. He was the one who started this cycle of infidelity. We, um, we always had a rocky relationship. Uh, 10 years, separated numerous times, mostly because of me. Um, I was always in the streets. This was like a normal thing for me, being in the streets, being gone, you know, dealing with other women. It was, it was always, I never really cared the way I should, you know. After we lost our child, I just didn't take heed to it. After the separation, Mrs. Johnson had to go through a whole pregnancy alone. But fate had other plans because she ended up getting a miscarriage. At that time, it was Mr. Johnson who came through for her. They tried getting back together, but things turned bad again. She never addressed me enough to make me feel like a man. Well, I, I feel he was like I was addressing too many other women. So I why feel like should I, support. Why should I be there? Don't say you didn't feel like a man, because I always say if you a man, you feel like a man. A woman can't make you feel or not make you feel like a man. A man is a man. <laughs> So once they reunited again, Mrs. Johnson realized she hadn't been completely honest with her husband. 
She decided to confess to him how she thinks the baby might be another man's because she had sex with both of them during the window of conception. In the beginning, it was like, I'll be there. But like, if she's mine, I'll be there. But then after she was born, I asked him to come to paternity court. He said, I must have Dow or I must feel like it's his. And I was doing like it was ridiculous for him to come. When did you two reconnect? Can you tell me specifically when that was? On uh, June 20th. All right. Mrs. Johnson even informed the other guy about the paternity. But even though he promised he'd be there, he ended up bailing out. After Judge Lauren does some calculating herself, she thinks that this case needs paternity testing to settle matters for the best. I found that there was sufficient evidence to order both of you to submit to DNA testing at our laboratory since our last hearing. What has gone through your mind? No matter what the outcome is, I just kind of, I just want to be able to deal with it. How about you, Ms. Johnson? Well, yeah, I've been nervous. Kind of scared. Before announcing the results, the judge has to make sure Mr. and Mrs. Johnson will be able to handle the news properly. After all, they don't know what's going to hit them. They've had a miscarriage before, so they must know how to deal with this. After setting them up with a marriage counselor, Judge Lauren finally opens up the results. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. That's great news. <laughs> Absolutely. So happy. Wow. Wow. My nerves were shot, honey. I was like, woo! I'm so happy for you all. Mr. Jameson has been with Miss Smith enough to know she's never changing her cheating lifestyle. Her actions made him doubt whether Malachi and Michael are his children. And no matter how much Miss Smith tries to save this family, he's backing off. How, how long after that did she kick you out? I say probably like a month she kicked me out. And did you want to go back with your ex, Miss Smith? I did, but then I ended up back with him. I told him I didn't want to go to my exes. I was done with it. And I was right back with him. Because she knew what right was right for her, him. Your Honor. So you asked him to come back on home? Yeah. Who were you with before you asked him to come back? Two dudes, Your Honor. But when Mr. Jameson moved in again, he caught her texting multiple men. She was telling them she was using Mr. Jameson and she never loved him. Of course, Mr. Jameson ended up confronting her and leaving her. The moment he left, she had sex with a guy from her neighbors. He told me yes. When she kicked me out, she had sex with him too. And there's, there's another guy. A third guy? Yeah, there's a third guy. Who told you this? I found it in the phone. The Ooh, phone. The you phone can't tells stay it. out that phone. Nah, can I cut it. I cut it. And that, you know, the saddest thing was, I really wasn't trying to say things because I'm going snooping for things. So I can't really be too mad, you know. But I'm mad. Miss Smith has zero shame regarding her behavior, and that's got the audience jeering at her. Even Judge Lauren is concerned because Miss Smith isn't denying any of the cheating accusations. Yet, she's still insisting that both kids belong to Mr. Jamison. How can that be possible? Both of my kids, which I know he is the father, he don't want to man up. It's not about manning up. It is about manning up. I've been, been there for up. kids, you know what I'm saying? Fine, that means financially, physically, all well, that, Benjamin. I've been there too. I bought, bought diapers, bought clothes, toys. How many toys. times? How many it's not times? about how many times. I, I, do, I do it when they need it. So, Miss Smith, what happened to the relationship after Malachi was born? We break up, get back together. Mr. Jameson wants answers. For four years, they were together, and he caught her texting sexual stuff to other people. But then she lies straight to the judge and says that those were just texts. She never really committed to doing anything physical. After that, she ended up pregnant. Well, I got pregnant around the end of August, early September with Michael. Around October, mid-October, early October, I did start seeing someone else. I didn't get my menstrual cycle. So I went to the doctors and they told me, okay, I'm, I'm pregnant. I'm like, okay, so soon I tell guy I was dating. Cause I did, I thought it was his. So you tell the other guy first, yes. I'm pregnant and mm -hmm. this is your baby. Yeah. The judge is concerned whether Mr. Jameson is involved in the lives of the kids. And he says he tries as much as he can. He buys them diapers and brings them toys whenever he can. But he does regret signing the birth certificate because he can't fully commit unless he knows they're his flesh and blood. These papers right here, you know, if they're not mine, I got the applications for the change name right here. Because you Pepsi. don't want them she, to she, have your last name. She gave me, she she gave Michael my name in the hospital. I didn't even give her permission to do that. But like deep down, he knows they're both his. He knows. Benjamin, you know, know this. Yes, you do. So we you won't be here like, if I knew. Now. I'm dumb to prove to you also. Miss Smith has no right to act all high and mighty when it's her fault that her relationship with Mr. Jameson is so damaged. 
Judge Lawrence scolds her in front of the whole courtroom. But instead of learning a thing or two, she starts blaming Mr. Jameson again. And when I found out how far along I pregnant was, I came straight to bed and I told him, I said, this is your baby. Three months, but when, oh, I, had, she sneaky, when I found out she I was sneaky, pregnant three messy. months ago, I didn't know, her, I didn't I, know that this, guy. It's probably guys I don't even know about. But the thing is, I still loved her. And it's like, you know, I didn't want to fully leave her, but I, you know. Because you do love her. Right. In the end, the kids don't need to have parents constantly arguing with each other. It's bad vibes. And if these two want their children to grow up feeling safe, they'll have to work on this relationship. And that's what the judge tells them before she asks Jerome for the envelope. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Jameson, you are the father. I'm relieved. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Judge Lauren has never seen a case like this before. Mr. Nicholas has brought his wife into court because he doesn't trust her at all. In fact, he's doubting he even fathered four-year-old Naomi and one-year-old Nathaniel. Mr. Nicholas even has evidence against Mrs. Nicholas. You know, the sushi spot I used to work at, right, is a hot stuff. People come in. Some guy comes up to me and tells me, shut up to my face, that my wife is performing oral sex in the bathroom. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. You're at work at the sushi restaurant. Yes, ma'am. And a guy just comes up to you. And tells me that she's performing oral sex in the bathroom. Mr. Nicholas starts the story with his favorite sushi place, where a waiter one day told him how Mrs. Nicholas was giving oral sex to strangers in the washroom. Because he was working, he couldn't get proof. But then more people started approaching him with similar stories. And so I had to watch him. And then after the show was done, some lady comes up, tells, tells me straight to my face that my wife was having sex in the ride. Having sex in the ride? First of all, why would I have sex while my daughter was in the ride with me? And the chair just, the ride, the chair moves. Come on. I'm not that dumb. Yeah, let me get my point straight. Then why did my seven year old daughter come tell me straight to my face that you're jumping up and down some dude's lap? Once Mrs. Nicholas got caught by your daughter, it was the end for Mr. Nicholas but he still gave it a chance. He thought she would change her ways until she got caught having an affair with one of Mr. Nicholas's co-workers at a restaurant. But why would Mrs. Nicholas cheat? How did you find out that she had slept with the co-worker that got the diaper? She told me she left her panties there. I did not leave panties there. Uh, what? No. No, you told me you left your panties there. Oh my would God. Would you know the panties were missing? I don't, I'm not a No, she told me she just told oh, I left my panties there. I never said that. <laughs> With Mr. Nicholas opening up Mrs. Nicholas's secrets, she ends up feeling frustrated. She gets back at him by saying he was emotionally cheating on her with another woman. He would go to her and tell this other lady all their relationship problems. So she went and cheated on Mr. Nicholas with his look-alike. I'm being honest with you. Yeah. At least I, I told you a wrong letter when you were out of business. Come and on now. Tell oh, her why? Why did you do that? Yeah, tell me. Why? I'm, I'm sorry. It just looked like you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They ended up fighting about whether the kids look like Mr. Nicholas or not. He says there's zero resemblance between them. Judge Lauren asks Mrs. Nicholas why she can't stop cheating, and she says it's because she's tired of the way Mr. Nicholas treats her. Last time was um, his business trip. I mean, I, 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 I just wrote a letter and told you the truth. Excuse me. How many? How many times? How many, how many, times? How many times have you had sex? How many times? Less than 10, 10 different guys. While we're True. still married. While we're still married. Yeah. Some of them, I don't sleep with them. Yeah, I kiss them. Is that cheating? Kissing is cheating? Mrs. Nicholas openly admits that she keeps some men for sleeping with, and some she just kisses when she's bored. The audience gasps, and even Judge Lauren can't believe the audacity of this woman. Because of her behavior, Mr. Nicholas is now sleeping at another woman's place. Sounds That's like to me that both of you are accusing the other one of doing a lot of things, yeah. but the problem is, is that both but of you honor. are doing the no, other thing. No. I'm looking at Mr. Nicholas right now, and I see a man that's standing here emotional still over his wife, so I see love. The problem here isn't just the paternity. Of course, those two kids need to know who their real father is, but can Mr. and Mrs. Nicholas make this marriage work? Even though they've hurt each other, they still love each other a lot. Can the results give them the answers they want? Mr. Nicholas, you are his father. Exactly, I told you from the beginning. How do you feel, Mr. Nicholas? Relieved, really relieved. Baby Pandora's parentage was shrouded in mystery and had been since she was born. Apparently, Mr. Germany took the daddy duty whenever he felt like it, and Miss Holiday had enough of that. Will the truth set this family free, or will it shatter their fragile bonds? 
Let's get ready to unravel the secrets of this baby Pandora's box. Mr. Germany, you've summoned your ex-girlfriend to court today to prove you are not the father of her three-month-old daughter, Pandora. You say that although the evidence you've brought today is damning, you hope that you're proven wrong so that you can save your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Germany and Baby Mama's love story was a rocky one. Yep, and they've been together for quite some time, people. A whole whopping 12 years! Wow, and with more ups and downs than a roller coaster. But trouble came knocking at their door. How long have you been together? 12 years. A decade, Your Honor. Wow. So how do we get to a place where there's trouble? Yes, Your Honor, uh, we was off and on for quite a long time. Uh, we, me and her got rocky. I was seeing other people, she was seeing other people. We got back talking probably like 2017. Trouble with a capital T, yep. Now the defendant took a test and told the guy it was negative, and these guys get back together again. But hold on, mommy took a test again after two weeks, and bam, pregnant. Happy news, happy faces. But all went down the drain when the doctor revealed that baby mama had been pregnant for a while. September of 2018, and it was a reason because we was having unprotected sex. Two weeks after this I moved was... in. September was the negative one. I moved in in October because after the, uh, the negative pregnancy test, we talked about getting our family back together. Uh, whatever I had going on, I moved in with her in October. Two weeks after October, we were still, you know, messing around while I moved there. She take another pregnancy test, she's pregnant. So the disaster has struck. Uh, baby daddy was all over the place now. He did conception math and everything pointed to this one conclusion. The baby's not mine. Uh-oh. However, fate threw another surprise his way when he snooped on Miss Holiday's Facebook account. Mama had been busy. My baby was born in June, June 25th. If you was pregnant in October, your baby wouldn't have been born in June. It would have been born But afterwards. she looked just like you. It's a lot of kids that look like guys that's not theirs, you know? Like, I want to be for sure. I wouldn't put like a baby on you. I got multiple kids with you. Why would I do that with this one? Because you lied numerous times. It took these guys that long to find their way back to each other, only to be ripped apart again. Now those incriminating messages did not paint the mama in good colors, but she was still standing firm. Apparently, she was getting back at the baby daddy, but that backfired big time, didn't it? There, after we had that conversation, I told the man that he was not the father. My baby father was the father. He was upset that he she, wasn't the father. She so also that's mentioned why to I this guy that she regretted it. I that. was the baby daddy. Yes, of because you were a cheater. When you go snooping for something, you find it. What happens after you see these messages? Okay, after I see them messages, I got in my feelings. I doubted it, so we broke up. Mama could speak all she wanted. Mr. Germany wasn't buying any of it. Oh, yeah. And he had all the more reason for this, too. Because imagine his surprise when he got to know Miss Holiday was still in contact with the guy. Yeah! So much so, she was comforting him over text. Recalling all those took a toll, and baby daddy couldn't hold back his tears anymore. She comforted no. this guy. No, Your Honor. told her, like, it's not yours. Even though I wish it was yours, I regret that you the baby daddy. Why would I Oh, I wait. Wish wait, 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 wait. When did that happen? Same message line. He has cheated on me numerous times, and it's the reason why I said that and the way I felt at that time. I'm tired of it. I just want my baby to have her father. Well, the can of worms was open now, so no going back. These doubts were messing with the plaintiff's head so much, the poor man couldn't sleep at night. Even questioning baby Pandora's paternity made him ashamed as well. Now that's quite sad indeed. I try, but it's like every time I look at that baby, I think it could be someone else's. Then you think of those text messages, and, and it just messages. goes back and forth, then back and forth, and her not saying, no, you are not the father. The way she talked to the guy was like, you know, she was in love with this guy. You know, like maybe, maybe she did have a baby with this guy, Let's take mercy on this family and reveal the answers they came all the way over here for. Whether these guys had any future or not, all depended on those four words. The verdict was here. Mr. Germany, you are the father. <laughs> I can see how relieved you are. <laughs> It's a relief, you know, like, now my brain don't have to be at war with that baby. Like, I love that little baby so much. A tale of love gone awry, with a one-month-old twist named Noah. Yep, that's how modern-day love stories turn out to be. 
Miss Watkins and Mr. Washington embarked on a journey from innocence to intimacy. But now the baby daddy was being labeled as an adult headache. Yup, true story. See for yourselves. So, Ms. Watkins, why do you think Mr. Washington is denying your son? He's ready to start his rap career, and that's stopping him from wanting another child. And I'm a good person, and I just want to do the right thing. If she's not 100% sure that I'm the father, how am I supposed to be 100% sure that I'm the father? You got to make this situation make sense, Your Honor. So, childhood friends took their friendship to the next level. Yep, the good old friends with benefits situation. Unfortunately, Baby Daddy didn't seem to agree with that version much. Yep, he came up with his own. And then it was plain old. He said this, she said that. As we got older, he did. We branched off. We just reconnected just recently. So wait, there. you were childhood friends? Yes. And then at some point, you all became boyfriend and girlfriend, were no, intimate, what, what? We talked when we were younger, and then I just moved down here, found out she was staying here, so we ended up being connected, He talking. knew I was staying. So Miss Watkins basically just jumped one ship and landed smack dab into the arms of the other. The ships being her potential baby daddies, of course. Now, the defendant had strong doubts she was still humming and drumming that too. However, during the fun times with the other guy, Mombi ended up taking the wrong name. Yup. As soon as he got down here and we started messing around, I was no longer messing around with him. It was like him. actually like month and a half. So you're admitting that you had a previous relationship that basically ran all the way up into the time you reconnected with Mr. Washington. Do you agree or disagree? Yes, I do because they were still together every single day. So that happened? What a train wreck of a relationship. Amidst this disastrous situation, baby mama ended up pregnant. Now it was a full-blown catastrophe. However, she took the baby daddy in the loop. But the way she did that, uh, wasn't so smart, I gotta say. And I said, Jamillion, I'm pregnant. I don't know how far along I am, but once I get my due date, I'll let you know. So but when you say to a man, I understand. I'm pregnant. Yes, I understand. And I don't know how far along I am, and when I find out, I'm gonna let you know. That is paternity doubt. So the giggling finally stopped. Thank the Lord. Moving on, Miss Watkins was kicked out of the house after this revelation. Not a mature decision by the baby daddy, though. So she fended for herself. But baby daddy did make it to the birth of the baby. Let's see how that went. Once we found out I was pregnant, he kicked me out of his house. I mean, I had, during my whole pregnancy, fended for myself. Wasn't there to rub my belly, wasn't there to provide food for us to eat. He wasn't there. And knowing that I'm pregnant, big possibility that he's yours, still didn't care. But the That's truth it. is, he still has doubt. Is that right, Mr. Yes, Washington? Honor. Now, hold on a minute, because the baby mama wasn't finished testifying. Nope. She had an exhibit prepared highlighting all the reasons she thought the baby was fathered by the dear old Mr. Washington. She really nailed that exhibit. They look identical, Your Honor. I don't know why he did not sound. After that heat, my son came home with hairy legs. When he was born, he had hairs on his legs that you could not miss. Jamillion explained to me while I was pregnant that him and his kids came out with hair all over their body, mainly on their legs and their butt. My son has hair on his legs and his butt. Following that, Judge Lake took help of a professional, and she established that the medical ailment that made baby mama so sure about paternity was in fact correct. Uh-oh, what's gonna happen now? This is how I feel. The results will tell it all. I don't want to keep going back and forth and arguing about it. I might have. Have you seen that. Noah, Mr. Washington? I had only seen him the day he was born at the hospital. And since then, and ain't heard seen from him, him ain't seen him, him, ain't tried to reach out. Matter of fact, I'm sorry, I did reach out to him, asked him to set up a date together. It was time to wrap it up. Finally, the results were in. The only thing left was to discover the verdict for these young lovebirds now estranged. Let's see whether love blooms again or not. Mr. Washington, you are the father. <laughs> it's a beautiful little boy, and that's Thank you, your, your little Honor. boy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna step up. Like, I have no problem, like, taking him with me, picking him up, doing all of that. I just wanted to know if the baby was actually mine, Your Honor. Miss Laws was burning with a heavy desire. A desire to prove to the defendant that he was the one who fathered their baby and not the other guy. But wait, there was a twist. It seemed the other guy, Mr. Davis, passed away before this court hearing. And it 
So these guys were now at the mercy of paternity court. Ms. Laws, you have dragged your ex-boyfriend, Mr. Bailey, into court to prove to him that he is the father of your 19-month-old son, Josiah. You believe he is denying paternity because of his mother's doubts. There is a chance that Mr. Bailey is the father of your four-year-old son. So these guys met way back in middle school and their relationship has been on again, off again, a roller coaster since then. Way to go, guys. And during one of those off time periods was when the plaintiff hit it up with Mr. Davis. And so her Arizona escapade began, but ended up costing a lot when she got the joyous news. Me and Mr. Bailey actually met in middle school and we kind of been like on and off. My mother stays in Arizona, so I left middle school and went to Arizona and that's when me and Mr. Bailey broke up. Before coming back, I actually met Mr. Davis and we was in a relationship for about two years. Hear the drama, folks. So baby mama had a bun in the oven. The only thing left was to relay the news to the baby daddy, which she did to both of them. Now, even though she was confused about the timeline, she took the easy way out and let the poor Mr. Davis believe the baby was his. Even Courage the Cowardly Dog had more courage than that. We gonna find uh, We have a lot of people here on this earth, Mr. Bailey. Let me give you a news flash. They are products of one night stand. It only takes once. Did you use protection on that one night? No. That's a recipe for making a baby. How old was Jamari when Mr. Davis passed away? He was two years old. So Miss Laws had the guts to create this mess, not the guts to take responsibility for it. And that ended up making even more of a mess. No surprise there. She claimed when she finally told the news to the defendant, he was overjoyed and accepting. But he didn't believe that so much now. Did he? When I first found out I was pregnant, I didn't have the guts to even tell Corey that I cheated. You know, I was in love with that man. I told him second after I told Mr. Davis. And what Mr. Bailey said was, that's my baby. Did you say that's my baby? No, how am I gonna Excuse say that? Him not... and his cousin were saying that. Excuse me, can I, I say cousin, how am I gonna say, say that's my wait, baby? Cause you know you slept with me. Cause you know you slept with me. Stakes were through the roof for the baby mama on this one. Cause apparently Mr. Bailey made some big promises on one condition. You can guess what that would be. The results had to be in their favor. Oh my. I never had the guts enough to even, that's why I'm here today, honestly. Cause I kept that secret for so long. I was young, I didn't know how to say it. It would hurt, you know what I mean? He dead now. So he said he don't know if he could be the dad. What he told me Friday was, if both of these kids come out mine, I'm going to marry you. You know what I mean? So why, why even sit here and lie like you don't even know it's a possibility? Up next, Mr. Davis's sister came up to the podium to speak on her brother's behalf. Now, her family accepted the baby as theirs and never doubted the paternity. They claimed they had never had any reason to till the court summits. That must have been quite a shock then. The baby mama, though, had another story to tell. Did your brother ever express any doubts to you? No. He was so happy that he had his first child on the way. When did you find out there was a possibility that Jamari may not be your brother's biological child? I never had that feeling because I, I was like happy with my brother, so I always thought that was my brother's son. Moving on, the baby mama felt everyone ganging up on her, so she became quite defensive. Amidst all that ranting, her floodgates broke. And then there were just tears with a dash of screaming. Jamari was his baby. He he done more for he done more for Jamari. Like that he would want to be around Jamari than you ever wanted to be around Josiah. I even though me and you not mine. together. Like, even though me and you not together. Any kid. I gotta know that they're mine. Well, you know that boy is yours. Until you said your mom, until you said your mom was I like, don't he just don't like, look like your daughter, just, then that's not your baby. Listen. Well, these guys were utterly miserable, and results were the only thing that truly mattered to them. It was either gonna make them or break them. Either way, one party was sure to be devastated by the outcome. Let's see which one that was. The biological father is Mr. Bailey. So after all of the doubt, we now know Josiah is your son. Okay. How do you feel? Cool, I feel a lot better now. Ain't nothing going That thing. you know? Yeah, I feel a lot better I know now. Yes, Your Honor. People say it's women who like drama, but it looks like some men are just born with it. Mr. Hayes was really excited when he and Miss Chapman gave birth to two-year-old Maurice. But now he's itching for a little drama in his life and is denying the baby boy. 
What's going on? He's not doing nothing for Maurice Jr. He barely does for Mariah. Like for instance, on Christmas, he brought Mariah five presents. Then bring Maurice Jr. nothing. For Christmas? Yes. Nothing? Nothing. Is that true, Mr. Hayes? No, oh, ma'am, she's telling a lot of yarn. The drama started when Mr. Hayes found a letter in the mail that said Miss Chapman was pregnant. But when he confronted her about it, she said no. Four months later, he asked her again, and she lied to him once more. At this point, he began thinking she was having an affair with another man. I didn't know if I wanted to keep him, to be honest, or what. So we talked about it, and we got back together. So he came back? Yes. After he found out you were pregnant? Yes. Did it seem as if he accepted the pregnancy? He went to every doctor appointment we'd been, with that I'd had since it's we got back it's together. I had, exactly. I had no symptoms, I had none of this. But the most unbelievable thing is why Mr. Hayes believes the boy's not his. It's because he doesn't have any symptoms. Is this man okay? Because it's the woman who gets pregnant. Why would he start having cravings and gaining weight? But then why did he sign the birth certificate if he still had doubts? What symptoms were you supposed to have? <laughs> like, you know, cravings, uh, I, oh, you, I can't you have, wait. When your uh, when she girlfriend's was pregnant. pregnant the uh -huh. first time, when she's uh -huh. pregnant the first time, you gain weight. But this time, you didn't have the same symptoms. You didn't no, eat, you didn't have any craving, no, and you believe it wasn't your child. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Still, Mr. Hayes doesn't have a convincing story. He could have waited 60 days before signing the birth certificate, but he didn't. That's because he realized that to get a DNA test, he would have needed money. And because he was broke, he decided to become the baby's fake father for a while. The only reason why I just really had doubt is because when she asked me over to her dad's house after she left, I seen another guy coming out the house. When I walked into the door, I explained to her, I asked her, I said, who is that guy? She said, that's my daddy's friend. I said, yo dad don't hang around young dudes. So she said, they just work together, it ain't, it ain't nothing. When the other guy started calling Mr. Hayes, he knew something was up. This man kept telling him he was the baby's dad, and Mr. Hayes found it suspicious how, at the same time, Miss Chapman wasn't letting him see the baby either. Did you tell another man to come and get his child? I never told another man to come and get his child. In the day that he's talking about, he came over there and saw the guy in my house. He brought her with him over there. So, Miss Chapman, was there any other possible father? I was talking to the guy who he was talking about, but he could not run the time that the doctor said I, I could see no. Because Miss Chapman had so many guys in the picture, it's getting a little confusing for Judge Lauren to make sense of all this drama. Since a boy needs a mother and a father, the only way to conclude things is to announce the results. You are not the father. That's fine. He can have his night back. That's but fine. But you took it through all it. Yeah, I took it through all that, but did I not tell you I was with somebody else, though? No. Did I not say that? Oh, you not with nobody else, but at the <laughs> time. Before we start getting silly to save face, the point is, it's not his child. Mr. Byram had no idea he was signing up for a lifetime of drama when he got together with Miss Morris. The two have two children together, but so much has happened that has made Mr. Byram doubt about their third son, Jackson, being his. This is the second time she's done this to me since we've been together. This isn't just the, the first time that she's cheated on me. This is the second time. And I've been nothing but faithful and loving to her since day one. Second time it happened once. Miss Morris, did you cheat on him? Yes, Your Honor. Right from the start, there is no doubt Mr. Byram is the innocent one in this case. After he caught Miss Morris red-handed, he began to rethink his entire life with her. Judge Lauren is shocked and asks Miss Morris what forced her to cheat on the man who loves her so much. We were having trouble way before I even slept with his friend. I was always constantly getting accused. He's always constantly telling me I'm cheating. It's been happening for four years now. What I'm trying to understand we, is he keeps accusing you, so you just go ahead and validate the accusation? Well, we technically we split up for a month. And this isn't the first time Miss Morris cheated on Mr. Byram. The first time it happened, he left the house for months. But the big question here is that Miss Morris slept with his friend on the 25th of September, while she slept with Mr. Byram on the 27th of September. That means either of them could be the father. She was sleeping with him every day. I would go over there and get mine in the morning, and we, she would have him at we, night. We split up for a month, and he was constantly blowing my phone up every day because we completely split up. He moved to his friends down the street, and I was still in the house. Like, I, I was the one that got to stay at the house with the other two children. Despite all the drama between them, why does Mr. Byram keep trying to make things work with Miss Morris? It's got to do with his daddy issues. His dad bailed out on him when they were kids, and now he doesn't want to leave his children behind. 
At the same time, Miss Morris is trying to involve the other man into all their lives. The other potential father is actually incarcerated right now, or else he would be here too. Dude's in prison. I've been taking care of her and, and both of the kids. Don't get me wrong, her grandma helps us out with diapers and stuff, but I've been taking care of her and our kids by myself. She don't work. I go to school. I go to cosmetology school, and the only reason I had to drop out was because I had the babies. Even though Mr. Byram's been trying really hard to bond with Jackson, he just can't. Every time he looks at the boy, he sees his friend's face in him. Miss Morris complains that sometimes Mr. Byram acts like a dad, and then sometimes he acts like a stranger. But why did Miss Morris choose his friend of all people? He's always treated me like crap, but he always belittles me. It's been going on for four years now, and it's just... Do you have feelings for this other guy? No, I don't. You I mean, if, yeah, he's the, do. if he's the father, I'm going to let him be in his talk life. About him, you tell you know, him I'm not going to not gonna not keep father. kid away from their father. I don't think any woman should do that. Because of Miss Morris and all her dramatic shenanigans, now Mr. Byram's family doesn't want to bond with Jackson until the tests show he's the father. All of this made Miss Morris admit that she's made a mistake. The drama gives you an adrenaline rush, but it doesn't give you a happy family. What does Mr. Byram want? I don't want to argue in front of our kids anymore. I want them to grow up and be like, damn, our, my family is awesome. We go on trips, we go on vacations. There's no arguing between us. I don't want that anymore. Don't want to argue anymore. I just don't. That's the only reason I want to go. It was the kid and the arguing. It has to stop. The arguing has to stop. Forget the drama for a moment, because there are real people involved here. Does Miss Morris really feel an ounce of guilt for what she did? She says she regrets the cheating, but she shouldn't have dragged a baby into all this drama. Only the results can bring them peace now. You are the father. Yes! I'm happy about that. That's just, Congratulations. Thank you. That really helped me out a lot. I like, How does it feel now? It feels great. I almost want to cry that he's mine. That would yeah. be fine. You've been through a lot. Mr. Fields is done with women chasing him with paternity accusations. He just wants some peace in his life. Miss Foster has a flair for drama, but who knows if she's being honest this time. Can she prove that her 17-month-old daughter is Mr. Fields' baby? He brought her about three onesies and two pair of socks. And she has medical needs. Tiana had three surgeries. She had open heart. She had diaphragm and a G-tube. Right now, um, she's having some development problems. So we're just having follow-ups in Syracuse with all the rest of her doctors. So the day Mr. Fields met Miss Foster for the first time, they didn't even try to keep it under control. They let their urges take control and ended up having sex until Miss Foster's mother came to pick her up. But was Miss Foster a virgin before she met this guy? Miss Foster, he said that you were saying you were a virgin at that time. Were you? I was practically before him. There was some was other guy. There was How some other guy. A there was some other guy before him. I don't count that as a partner. You said you were a practically a yeah. virgin. Yeah. You yeah. can't practically be a virgin. But the thing that bothered Mr. Fields the most was how Miss Foster kept invading his privacy. At first, she kept harassing his mother with numerous texts, and then she got a hold of his brother's Facebook account. Things got so bad, she even texted his wife. I never text texted his wife. wife. I never text his wife. I have never known a party for three days. Let's get some order. If she believes you're her child's father, of course because she would try to get in touch with you. You think she's trying to get in touch with you because she wants to be with you? No, 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 no. I'm, I, listen, I'm married. I'm, I'm well, I'm really happy married. Bring evidence of that. Where's the paper? Where's the, where's the marriage certificate? Where's that? But Miss Foster has a whole different perspective on the story. According to her, she's the one who left Mr. Fields, and since then, he's been begging her to take him back. In fact, he even wants to have this baby. So why is he putting up all this drama in the courtroom then? He just was talking to me two days ago. No, I wasn't. Telling me how he loved me, how this is not going to work because Bruh, his family doesn't you, like wait, her. Wait, time out, because now you're lying. Everything. Now, now um, you're lying. I and I have evidence you right lie. here, actually. You'll show me You do. Head. I still have love for you that will never change. I wish we would have had a longer relationship. <laughs> Even with my girlfriend now, our relationship not going to last long. The entire audience feels hooked to the drama. When the evidence is shown in court of all his Facebook messages, he lies in court and says that he doesn't even use Facebook. 
But then he starts lying about using protection with her when they had sex. I don't know what he's talking about, but I have not became on the depot and I haven't even dealt with him since January until last month. When I was that, with him, that, I was look. on the pill and I lost, I didn't take we it that day. We talked about the luck before the baby was born. Were you? And he was there at the hospital. Your, your too. birthday, you thought the baby he was, was there, there at the hospital. So, Mr. Fields, you came to the hospital uh -huh. for the birth. Mm -hmm. So, if Mr. Fields is in denial about the baby, why did he show up during the birth? For evidence, Ms. Foster asks her mother to testify on her behalf. Her mother claims that Mr. Fields is just being dramatic in court, whereas in real life, he was always supporting Ms. Foster. He went to doctor's appointments. When we went to Syracuse, he would meet us at the doctor's appointment. He would stay there. He would be there. He comforted my daughter. He was asking questions about the baby because they found three holes in her heart. Because he was involved with my daughter and because he was concerned about my, my grandchild, I, I accepted him. Me and my husband accepted him. But then, Ms. Foster reveals how she was actually pregnant with twins, and when one of them died, Mr. Fields just told her to suck it up and get over it. What kind of a heartless man is he? Now, he thinks she was already pregnant when they had sex, but only the results can show them the truth. Mr. Fields, you are her father. Can I hold her? I want you to hold your daughter, and I want you to help take care of your daughter and be there for her and support her. You gotta work together. There's just no other way. You all have talked about a lot of things that have gone on in the past. Mr. Fernandez was going to happily walk Miss Butler down the aisle in a couple of weeks, but some drama has turned their plans into complete trash. And now he's begging Judge Lauren to help them uncover the details of Miss Butler's nighttime adventures. You claim you found evidence that she cheated and another man may have fathered your little girl divine. Now you called off the wedding, may have fathered your little girl divine and lost $300, am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Now you're suing her for that and you've petitioned the court for a paternity test. Yes. When Mr. Fernandez discovered Miss Butler cheated on him, he got so angry, he went to the nearest pawn shop and sold her ring for $300. But he didn't know she was selling it so cheap. So now he's asking Miss Butler for the money. When Judge Lauren confronts Miss Butler, she starts accusing Mr. Fernandez instead. When we first got together, he already had a girlfriend. So he already was a cheater in the beginning. He cheated with- I, I cheated. Why are we yeah. here? We not, I didn't cheat. Okay. Why are we here right now? You did cheat, and that's exactly why I cheated. But he he already had a girlfriend when we first got together. You know the baby How is yours. I cheat the baby? You know the baby is yours. So did Miss Butler cheat on him because Mr. Fernandez got another woman pregnant? How did she even find out? According to her, he came back home one day smelling like sex, so she started kissing his entire body to sniff him out. How did Mr. Fernandez react? Your Honor, so, I came in from work. You lying. Went to try to get some I know sleep. What, I know try what to get some sleep. Like. She say, oh, you smell like you sex. Know. I smell like sex. I've been you working all day. You know what sex like, Working all day. Working it's all day. It's a difference day. between sweat oh, okay. and sex. So the bottom line is you that felt she cheated. That's the bottom. like he had been cheating. Yes. But when Mr. Fernandez lied to her, she called up her friends and went to a club to party through the entire night. Watching her friends enjoying themselves made her really jealous, so she scouted the place for some handsome man to get laid with. I used the condom, for sure, I used the condom. It's no, you know, down my mind, I know I used the condom. So you admit to cheating? I don't feel like I was cheating because he cheated on me, you so. It was sexual intercourse, it's cheating. Cheating okay, is cheating when we were together. Were you still in the relationship or you had broken up? I felt like we was broken up. All of this drama happened because Miss Butler assumed Mr. Fernandez was cheating on her. So he snooped through her phone and found out she was cozying up with some Gucci guy. Then Mr. Fernandez reveals a huge secret about her. You're saying Ms. Butler is allergic She's to- She's allergic to condoms, Your Honor. We never use them. I, I wasn't even aware of this because so, we never use condoms. So the, to the latex material. To the latex material. Okay, so now, Ms. Butler, yeah. are you or are you not allergic to latex? Are you? <laughs> no. So I'm you're not. not? No. Mr. Fernandez is in for a shock when he realizes Miss Butler was just trying to get herself pregnant with him so she could trap him into a paternity case. That's why she used a condom with the Gucci guy, but not him. 
After living with her for so long, only now is he realizing he's trying to marry a crazy woman. When the baby will, will did get conceived, okay, because here, you we always thought we had an argument. I went to take uh, the daughter out. Gucci, Gucci man, baby. Leave. So of course one day, anyway. so of course one day I'm gonna I'm say yes, yeah, Gucci man, baby, because that's what you say. Hey, nobody want to keep hearing that. I don't want to keep hearing this Gucci man, baby. So of course I'm going to say yeah, it's not your baby. Now, after all the cheating fiascos and the condom drama, these two need answers. Is Divine the Gucci man's baby, or did Mr. Fernandez father her? And in case the results come back positive, will these two try to patch things up to raise Divine in a normal household? Let's go to the answers. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Fernandez, you are her father. Uh, oh, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm uh, talking about. Do you oh, see her? Do you man. see her? Do you see her? Look uh, at her. All this time. All this time. 